Okay, here we're going to look at some clips from the recent World Junior Championship, the under-20 that just took place in Moncton and Halifax. The first few clips, we're going to focus in on Thomas Millich, goaltender for Canada. But what I wanted to really focus in on is his uh, exceptional use of the overlap. So here we have the Swedish player driving down the wall. We have Millich looking around a screen. Trying to get eyes on the puck. There it starts to move. Good angle here going into what I would consider zone two. So zone two would just be this space in here. All right, so as the player starts to shift down in what we call zone two, Right, then that's where the goalie's going to look to take the overlap position. So here we want to identify Thomas's foot. It's just slightly past the post there. Okay, he's low and locked in, anticipating a shot here uh, on the strong side, even getting ready for a pass. But as things progress, right, so now again he's still in the overlap, but now he's starting to rotate back in to get both feet on the goal line uh, as this player here that's going down the wall, the Swedish player with a, with the a puck is on their strong side. Right now there's a lot of traffic in front, not a great passing lane. You might be able to hit 25 out in front here, um, but the chances are the Canadian defender is going to get in there or the, uh, the winger collapsing down low. What we want to do, though, is really focus in here on Thomas's ability to kind of shift in on his post, continue to track. So, right, so we're going to go back out. Thomas has kind of followed down here, down to the post, some nice tight shuffles, toes up ice. Here as he identifies, okay, that player is going behind the goal line, right? So for me, this would be zone one, anything in here below this line here. As the player goes into zone one, Thomas is going to get his foot quickly around the post, rotate around into what I like to call zone one footing. So now he can move laterally, lock down in tight by the post, go into a post load if he needs to, VHRVH if the player decides to attack back out in front, or if he decides to feather the puck out in front here to the... Um, the late defenseman coming in, then Millis has an opportunity to get toes out, get squared up in the puck, get an angle, and ideally be able to shut that down. As we continue to progress the film here, so here we have Thomas now going into the RVH. Excellent stick position, good eyes on the puck. We want to make sure that we're here, we're watching Thomas getting his eyes on the puck quickly, early eyes. Puts himself in a really great spot to make a save. Okay, again, Thomas Millich, right, excellent position here, not a lot of threats in the middle, obviously the American, uh, the winger F3 on the far side here, we have good gap by the Canadian defenseman, it's going to push the American down the wall, here, nice little pass to his buddy in the inside here, again, Millich doesn't panic, getting, identifying that the player is going to receive the puck again in what we call zone 2. So anything in this space here. Okay, so Thomas is going to shift down into his overlap. As a American player receives the puck, doesn't need to square on this. Obviously, the American player is not in an opportune spot to release that puck. Probably going to look to distribute here, especially with being on his off wing. He's going to have to rotate quite a bit in order to generate any kind of um, potential shot on net. Here, we see that rotation here. All right, so Thomas doesn't have to over-square on this. Let's the player come in, grabs a puck, handles it a bit, identifies, okay, there's going to be a shot on net. Able to lock down, right? Traditional butterfly, nice, compact. Tight, no holes uh, through the body. Melich being a shorter goalie. So, yes, there is some daylight above his shoulder. 
But from the angle that the American shooter is going to shoot at here, it's almost impossible for him to get that puck up and under the bar. Just the angle it would have to take right now to get up and under the bar, he, he doesn't have enough space to get any velocity on that, plus get it up and over. And it's going to have to kind of arc a little bit more because the straight line is going to put it over the net. So it'd have to almost end up something like this in order for it to be able to go in. So this play here I wanted to really focus in on because it's now being known as the Panda and it kind of replaces the RVH in a play like this. So there's a lot of great Canadian support here in front of the net. The American shooter number five doesn't really have many options at all other than to put the puck on net. Really a little bit selfish, but in a tournament like this, any shot on net is going to be a bonus. But you see how Milic was able to track down calmly, drift into zone two, rotate into zone one footing here, and just be able to get himself down and locked in on the post, can make an excellent save, and can move off the post if needed. Able to stay low, locked in. Right, and here we have an opportunity to see the Canada Czech gold medal game. Again, great D here by the Canadians. The Czech player didn't really have much at all. Milic is able to stay square and true to the puck carrier. But again, as the puck carrier starts to shift down, gets pushed to the outside, gets into the, the zone two shooting area. Milic is here. He's a little bit more aggressive on the uh, overlap right now as he's drifting back. But right now it's a one on all. There's absolutely no pass options. So there's no real reason to be right in back by the post. You can take a little bit more ice on this. So this is one of the areas that if you have a skilled enough goalie to recognize what's going on, then they can definitely take, um, take back ice, but not paramount in this situation. Right, nice compact save again. We back up a little bit, kind of drifts into the panda, I guess you'd call it. You can see that Milic's backside is kind of bumping in against the post right now. But nice, clean, and compact. Really excited to see Milic using the, uh, the overlap so effectively. I felt that in the World Junior Championship this year that a lot of goalies use the overlap very effectively. We're going to see another clip coming up here from the, uh, the Finnish goalie. But again, just wanted to kind of highlight how effective the overlap can be and then how versatile it can be, how the goalie can make subtle adaptations and then still be able to do their post load um, still be able to play any kind of threats down low into that zone one. So anything kind of below the uh, bottom of the circle here. So zone one would be kind of anything down in this area here. Right, so here uh, we have the Canada-Finland game, but again, just kind of highlighting effectiveness so we have a canadian player here coming in on a one on five so obviously not a, a great uh, scoring opportunity here for the canadian players but has an opportunity to get potentially get a shot off and just the way the finnish goalie kind of plays him where if he'd gone into an rvh or any kind of post load where some goalies might have opted for that is going to put him at a, at a really compromised position here, especially f where the puck is being released from. So if we're looking based on what I would consider zone two and where the goalie would start looking getting to get into the overlap, right, is right about where that puck is being released from. We also want to identify here that the, uh, the, the puck is also being released within the dot lane. So again, almost right in the in the home plate area so primary scoring opportunity could be using the defenseman here for a, a screen or deflection but nice and compact movement nice save uh, no issues here could have been a lot worse but again 
The goalie doesn't have to be hyper aggressive here. They can be a little bit more aggressive because obviously it's a one on five situation. So the chances of the Canadian player being able to penetrate to the inside are slim to none. So you can take a little bit more ice. There's no pass option. So you can be a little bit more aggressive here, but they're using the, uh, the NHL creases here. So you can see based on the goalies, the top of their pads, they're still pretty tight to the net. So now they still have the ability to recover very easily to take uh, back ice on any kind of cross ice movement, moving lateral, and can get that foot freed and, and mobile really easily. Right, we're talking uh, short side foot here. But as we can see from the coverage perspective, right, everything's nice and locked in. Goalie's in a great position. This goalie here is a little bit bigger than Milic, but as you can see, there's still some daylight there. But they're also down with the shot. Shot comes in, shot's released, and uh, the goalie's down as the puck is hitting them. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see the goalie down and then the puck hit them. Then they're just dropping. They're not reading the shot. 